Good evening. Welcome everyone to our Bengali fish curry and carrot daikon salad cook along cooking class. I am Amy Church and I am here coming to you from Willamette Valley Kitchen Company in Salem, Oregon. Uh, this is my kitchen store and small cooking school um, that I've owned for the past, we're coming up on our six year anniversary actually on July 25th. So happy anniversary to us. Um, but we are so happy to have you here tonight. I'm here with my helper, Aaron, and he is going to be adjusting camera angles and answering any questions you might have. Um, one thing before I forget, hopefully you read through your initial prep steps and you have your yogurt ready to go. So if you don't, go ahead and do that right now while I'm doing the rest of the introductions. Mix together your um, plain whole milk yogurt with two teaspoons of cornstarch. And then you want to let that come up to room temperature a little bit rather than adding it straight from the fridge. Um, that will help our curry come together more smoothly. So if you haven't already done that, go ahead and do that and just leave it out on the counter. Um, if you have not been to our lovely store here in Salem, Oregon, um, I just wanted to encourage you to connect with us online or on social media. You can uh, sign up for classes and visit our website at salemcooks.com. If you enjoy the class you've taken this evening, um, please do invite your friends to sign up for future classes. Um, you can attend them together and talk about it afterwards. Also, we are on Facebook at Willamette Valley Kitchen Co. if you'd like to like us. And we are on Instagram, um, at, our handle is at Salem Cooks. Please, if you are cooking along with me, uh, I would love it if you'd take a picture of your meal when it's finished and post it either on Facebook or Instagram and go ahead and tag us. I would love to see what you've cooked. So tonight we are going to be making um, two recipes. You'll have a full dinner when you're done. We're going to be making a spicy Bengali fish curry. Um, we'll serve that with white rice. We're not going to cover the cooking of the rice during class, but just cook a pot of rice along with your other dishes while we're cooking this evening, and that will be a nice base for your curry. And then we're also going to make a grated carrot daikon salad, which is very refreshing and cooling, um, and it's a nice contrast to the spicy curry. All right, I just wanted to mention really quickly, and then I'll get these out of the way, but um, if you are local in Salem, Oregon, I had the nicest surprise today. Um, a One of the gentlemen from Olson Florists came in to pick something up from the store. And just to be neighborly, he brought me this beautiful bouquet of flowers to put up at the front counter. So I was so happy and it was such a nice surprise to get that. And I wanted to show you guys because I felt like these flowers were the perfect colors for our fish curry tonight. It reminded me of what I was going to be cooking. So. Look at those, those are so pretty. Thank you, Olson Flores, for bringing us these beautiful flowers today. All right, uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, as you are following along with me, please don't feel stressed out. Um, I will go ahead and cook, and I probably chop and cook a little quicker than you do at home, but I will be taking little pauses to explain ingredients and um, other things like that. So please just keep on cooking and follow along with me and I think we will all have our meal finished up at around the same time. Let's see, anything else I forgot? I don't think so, so let's go ahead and get started. So we are gonna start out with our curry and get that um, mostly cooked through and then the last few minutes of cooking, it will need to cook for about eight to 10 minutes and we can prepare our salad while the curry is finishing up. Again, don't forget, um, we're not going to cover it in class, but please do start a pot of rice at some point, maybe halfway through the cooking, or you can just get it done right at the beginning here um, and just have that going while we are doing this other cooking so that you have rice to eat when you are done with these recipes. And again, one more reminder, if you are following along at home with recipes, you'll see the first step on the fish curry recipe is to mix up your one and a quarter cups of whole milk plain yogurt plus two teaspoons of cornstarch. We'll talk a little bit later about why exactly we're doing that, but for now, just go ahead and mix that up. 
you want it in a container that has some space still at the top so that you can stir a little bit of something in here. Don't have it full to the brim, use a little bit bigger bowl or container. And then just set that out at room temperature. Do not put it back in the fridge because we want it to come up and get a little warm. Okay, our next step tonight is we are going to prepare and season our fish. So you can use um, a variety of types of fish in this curry and it's all going to turn out great for you. What I generally use is a snapper or rockfish and we get all of our seafood from uh, Fitz Seafood Market in Salem, Oregon. And we have snapper, it's fresh Pacific snapper from them tonight. Um, I'm using about a pound and a half of the snapper and they have removed the bones for me so it is all good to go and boneless. Your pieces of snapper, if you are using snapper, are going to look about that big and it's a fairly thin fillet of fish, less than an inch thick. If you're using a thicker fish that will work just as well but you just want to make sure that you um, probably will need to cook the fish just a little bit longer if it's a thicker piece of fish. All right, I'm going to go ahead and chop this fish into large, larger than bite-sized pieces. So maybe about two inch pieces. And honestly, um, when I'm doing this, I find it very easy if you have a pair of nice heavy duty kitchen shears to just cut up your fish using your kitchen shears. Um, that way you can just cut it up right in the bowl that you're going to season your fish in and you don't even have to get another cutting board dirty, which is helpful. So I'm just gonna quickly cut this fish into largest chunks. Like so. We're gonna end up with pieces that are about that big. Choo, choo, choo. Now, um, once we have this fish cut up, we're going to lightly season it with half a teaspoon each of salt and ground turmeric. Um, the reason this recipe is a Bengali style curry is that the, the Bengal region of India has actually a lot of coastline. And so it is very common to have these types of kind of homey, home style, rustic, curries that include fish as the protein rather than um, a different protein like chicken or lamb. Okay, I just noticed one little weird piece right there. I think it had a tiny bit of skin on it or something. So get that off of there. Okay, arrange your fish. So it's kind of in one layer as much as possible and then we can add our seasoning. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these scissors and give my hands a quick wash and I'll be right back. All right, there we are. All right. Every, um, when I was doing recipe research for this class, pretty much every recipe I saw for this type of fish curry um, included this step, which is to just very lightly season your pieces of fish with turmeric and salt. Um, and I thought to myself, this is kind of unusual. You wouldn't think that just this small amount would make much of a difference to the end dish. And I actually um, tested out just taking this amount of salt and turmeric and adding it into the dish later and not bothering with adding the turmeric to the fish itself. Um, I was surprised to find out that it really does make a difference. Um, the pre-seasoning of the fish just very gently like this um, resulted in an end product recipe that was a lot tastier. So it does pay to actually do this little quick step of pre-seasoning your fish with your turmeric and salt. So there is our fish. I'm just going to set it aside. We're going to be using it fairly soon. So um, 
I don't think you even need to put it in the fridge, just set it aside for a moment. The turmeric I used, I wanted to mention, um, if you are in the Salem area, I especially like the flavor of the ground turmeric that you can get in the bulk section at Life Source grocery store. Um, I just think their turmeric there is, is a lot more flavor, really good aroma. So definitely check out their bulk section if you're looking for some good, high quality and fresh spices. Okay, we are going to um, turn on our pan now um, and I'm just gonna be heating it up. So I won't show you the pan view quite yet, not until we get our onion ready to go, but I am going to turn it on so that it can start heating up. And I'm just gonna turn it on to medium. I am using just a Le Creuset um, enameled cast iron Dutch oven tonight. It's probably about four and a half or five quart size, not a huge one. And that's a great option for this if you have something similar to that. You basically want a either a nice large deep saute pan or a Dutch oven for making this recipe. Go ahead and turn your pan and preheat it to, on medium heat. Not too hot but just right in the middle. We're gonna get our onion ready. So we're gonna start out this rustic homestyle curry by um, chopping up an onion and some fresh ginger. So I have one large onion. I have peeled it already and cut it in half. Uh, and I'm just gonna go ahead and dice it now. You don't need to dice it up too small, just kind of a medium dice. like so. So very often when you're making um, an Indian curry like this, the recipe will have you start out by heating up a little oil or you can also use ghee, um, which is a clarified butter that is common in Indian food, Indian cooking. Um, but tonight we're just using a little vegetable oil and these recipes will often start out by sauteing some onions and then possibly ginger or garlic or both and sometimes some chilies also. So this particular one we're going to use onion and fresh ginger to start out. Um, and once that is cooked together um, it's when you're cooking Indian food that's kind of referred to as the onion masala. Masala to my understanding, it's just kind of means mixture. So this is gonna be our onion ginger mixture. Just gonna get these onions ready to go here, scooped into my little scoop. I have more than will even fit in my scoop. It was a big onion, but those are all set. And I'm also going to prepare my ginger root. So this is just fresh ginger root. And when you're working with that, you wanna go ahead and peel it to start out with. I feel like the easiest way to peel your ginger is just with a small teaspoon and you can just peel the amount that you need leave the rest with the peel on to put back in your refrigerator i am using approximately an inch of fresh ginger root right now which of course it depends on the thickness of the piece of ginger root but I always kind of guesstimate in my recipes that each inch of ginger root will give you about a tablespoon of minced ginger, minced or grated ginger. So that's what we're looking for here. I have it peeled with a spoon. I don't know if you can see that it's peeled on this side. That side still has some peel because I'm not going to use that part. And then you can go ahead and um, one of my favorite tools to use for this is a microplane grater. If you have the traditional style microplane grater like that, that will work very nicely. But what works even better is their one of their newest tools, also by microplane brand, but it is a tool especially for ginger. Um, the teeth on it are different than their basic grater the teeth are little pointy teeth instead of flat teeth. And it just powers through the super fibrous ginger root in no time at all. So.
So I'm just grading that here. It just takes a few seconds for it to get all the way through that peeled ginger and get me the delicious, flavorful, fresh ginger that I need. If you don't have one of these style of graters, you can use the finest grater on your box grater. Um, or you could also just mince it up with a knife. I like to slice through it against the grain first and then mince it up from there. And there's how much ginger I came up with, about a tablespoon. All right, hopefully our pan is hot now. I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, about three tablespoons of oil. Like so, let that heat up for just a moment and then I will add the um, onion and ginger mixture in there and let that sizzle a little bit. So now you can see our stove view is up. You can check out what's going on in this pot as it cooks. Get the rest of those onions in there. And what you want to have happen here with your onions is you want them to get a nice light golden brown. If you're cooking over medium heat, that should take around 10 minutes. And you just need to stir them once or twice during that time. You do not need to stir them constantly. So I'll go ahead and give them a stir just to get them kind of coated with the oil to start out with. Like so. We're going to go ahead and turn off that view for now, um, but we will turn it back on a little bit later so you can see what's going on with our onions. Right now they are just cooking on medium for about 10 minutes. Okay, as those are cooking, we can get the other ingredients for our curry ready. Um, I'm going to just use a little bowl and measure all of our spice ingredients into that. We are making a very, very basic spice blend here. This is nothing um, too fancy. I um, didn't want to use spices that were hard to find since we, you know, are in strange times right now and maybe trying to avoid uh, lots of extraneous trips to the store. So um, this is just a super simple spice blend. Um, the main base spice is coriander, which is my personal favorite spice. And it is a delicious spice for cooking with fish. Um, it has a citrusy flavor, so it goes really nicely with seafood. Um, and we are using a lot of the coriander, a whole tablespoon of coriander. I do like to um, use a fairly freshly ground coriander. So if you open up your spice cupboard and give your coriander and you have pre-ground coriander and you give it a sniff and it doesn't really smell like much at all, it might be time to get some fresh. And as I mentioned, I actually like to grind mine fresh. So I, at my house, I buy whole coriander seed. Um, I kind of gently toast it just a little bit just till I can smell the aroma of the spice. And then I grind it in a spice grinder and I try to keep that relatively fresh, no more than a couple of months in my cupboard before I grind some fresh. So the one I'm using tonight, I think I just ground like a week and a half ago. We're going to add in some paprika and this is not spicy, just um, a simple good quality sweet paprika using two teaspoons of that. And this is going to add a beautiful color to the curry and also just kind of a mellow sweet pepper flavor. We have spice in here from our green chilies, um, but this is just adding a mellowness and some beautiful color, as I mentioned. And then also, we're gonna use a little bit more of the ground turmeric, another half teaspoon. We have a half teaspoon on our fish and another half teaspoon going in this blend. Turmeric is very earthy um, in flavor. And again, also it's a brilliant, brilliant yellow color. It is what gives curry powder its brilliant yellow color. Um, and it's gonna give our fish curry here a beautiful color as well. So we have our three spices mixed together. That's ready to go. Um, I have a can of diced tomatoes and I am using the Miraglen 
fire roasted diced tomatoes tonight. I really like the flavor of these. They have that little hint of smoky roastiness. Um, I think they're a great quality product. So we're gonna put this whole, this is a 14 and a half ounce can. We're gonna put the whole can in, including the juice and the diced tomatoes. So that will all go in as well. All right, a couple other vegetables that we need to prepare. This recipe calls for three jalapenos. The actual fresh chilies that are used in India are different varieties that can be um, hard to find in the United States if you don't have a large um, Indian population in your community. So check out your local Indian market if you have one and they may have a slightly more authentic green chili for you. But if that is not available to you, um, you can just go ahead with jalapenos or even serranos if you like it really, really spicy from your regular grocery store. Um, this recipe calls for one to three jalapenos and it gives you the option of whether you leave the seeds in or take the seeds out. So I will leave that up to you. Every time I make this, my family likes spicy food. Um, so I just go for it every time. I put all three jalapenos in with all of their seeds. And it's kind of like a fun game. You never really know how spicy it's going to be. You could try taking a little bite of your jalapeno when it's raw, but even then it can be hard to tell what it's going to turn out like once it's cooked. Um, Sometimes you buy jalapenos at the grocery store and they are not hot at all. Like honestly, almost hard to distinguish from green bell peppers. Other times you buy them and they are really, really spicy. So I will leave it up to you and your family's tastes whether you want to do um, one, two, or three and whether you want to leave seeds in or not. I like to chop these not super small, maybe into like little quarter to half inch pieces. This is a rustic homestyle curry, so we don't need to worry about chopping them up really, really small, really finely. Just chop them up coarsely. I'm gonna give our onions a stir. It's probably been four minutes or so, I would say, maybe four or five minutes, and they are definitely softening, but they are not, they don't really have any color yet, so we won't worry about turning on the, the stove camera quite yet, but we'll show you that in a little bit, in a few minutes here. Right now, just keep on letting them cook, stir them once or twice, and we'll continue on with our chopping. So I have my three jalapenos chopped up. I'm gonna add them to my little scooper here, all ready to go. The other thing that we add in at the same time as the jalapenos is um, some cloves of garlic. I'm gonna use four large garlic cloves. And you wanna mince these up. I'll leave it up to you whether you prefer to uh, use a garlic press or another garlic gadget or just mince them by hand. But however you like to do it, go ahead and get them minced up pretty finely. I'm just gonna chop off the little I guess they're the root ends of the garlic cloves. I prefer to get rid of those. If your garlic has is sprouting and has green sprouts in it, um, pro you've probably seen that happen with the garlic that you've been storing for a little while. Um, if that happens, it can make your dish taste a little more bitter. It's best to, at the very least, cut the clove in half and um, remove that green sprout from the center. If it's really getting to be a big sprout, you may even want to just consider discarding that garlic and getting a fresh bulb of garlic because your garlic might be tasting a little bitter at that point. So I'm just using my garlic press to press those four large cloves of garlic and I'm pressing it right over the pile of jalapenos because I'm going to add those two ingredients in at the same time. 
All right, so our garlic is all set and ready to go. I'm gonna give the onions a quick stir. I still don't think we quite need to look at them on the camera yet. We'll let them cook for just a few more minutes. If they don't seem on your stove to be getting brown at all, maybe turn your heat up just a little bit. I actually just suggested my heat up slightly. Um, and vice versa, if they're getting brown too quickly, go ahead and adjust your heat down a little bit. Looking for a nice light golden brown. All right. Let's talk about this yogurt mixture. Um, I had you at the very beginning of the recipe mix together one and a quarter cups of whole milk yogurt and two teaspoons of cornstarch. So this is a, a really nice kind of lighter, healthier curry, in my opinion, because it uses yogurt rather than cream or coconut milk, which can be a little fattier. Um, so I think it's very refreshing, but there can be an issue if you're um, if you've tried some Indian recipes in the past that have yogurt added to them, sometimes you have an issue where the yogurt will curdle when you add it into the other ingredients. And it doesn't really make the sauce taste bad per se, but it just looks a little strange. But there are some great tips to um, help you avoid that happening. And we are using all of those tips here uh, today in this recipe. So uh, first two tips. Number one, if you add a little bit of starch, so we added two teaspoons of cornstarch into this yogurt mixture, um, just that can help stabilize the yogurt a little bit and prevent it from having the curdling effect. And also, if you bring your yogurt up to room temperature um, before you try to stir it in, rather than having it go in ice cold from the refrigerator, that can also help prevent that. In addition to those two, we are also going to do something with our yogurt called tempering. And that is when it's time to add the yogurt, we're going to add a little bit of the hot mixture into the yogurt first to warm it up even more. And then we'll start adding the warmed yogurt back into the dish. So that will help. We're also going to take care to very gradually add the yogurt in rather than dumping it all in at once. So all of those things together will pretty much almost guarantee that you're not going to have a curdling problem, which will be really great. Okay, I think I'm gonna ask Erin to turn on the stove view because we are starting to get some golden brown color on our onions. All right, can you see how that looks? They're, they're not dark at all yet. They're still on the lighter side, but I can see golden brown color um, creeping up on the edges of them, which is what we're looking for here. I'm going to let those cook for maybe just about one more minute and then we'll progress on with our spices. Okay, just get all of your ingredients now lined up here and you'll be all ready to go. Um, we're gonna add our spice blend that we put together first. We're gonna let that cook for a couple of minutes. And then after that, we will add in the tomatoes as well as the jalapenos and garlic, plus a little bit more salt. So just make sure you have all of that prepared. Basically, what your onions should feel like at this point, you should see some golden brown color, and maybe you feel when you stir them like they're just barely starting to start sticking. That's a pretty good sign that you're ready to continue on to the spice step. So, if you had turned your heat up a little bit to get your onions, encourage them to brown, maybe turn it back down so it's definitely just at medium heat. And we have our spice blend. We're gonna add this first. Um, and the pan is basically, it has onions in it, but it's pretty much dry pan right now. So you do, once you add your spices, you need to stir it constantly for about two minutes so that your spices don't scorch or burn and create an unpleasant bitter flavor to your sauce. So go ahead and add in your spices. And then don't forget, now you just really need to stir. You should start to smell a very aromatic aroma 
as those spices start to heat up and cook in the pan. And you should feel like um, they are starting to stick to the bottom of the pan a little bit. That is not bad. That's what you want. But definitely keep on stirring so that you don't have any scorching. Oh, we had a question here um, back to our ginger that we chopped up. And I just want to make sure I answer all your questions today. Um, I think, Gre was it Greta? I think Greta asked, actually, I'm not sure who it was. Miranda? Somebody asked how you store your ginger once you've peeled off the amount that you need. Um, I think the best way, honestly, is to store it in the refrigerator in a bag that is not sealed. So. Um, I just think, I feel like if you seal up the bag with the ginger, it can get kind of squashy more quickly. So longest lasting, just keep it in the fridge, but not sealed up. Um, another option if you don't go through your ginger as quickly is to just grate it all and store it in the freezer. That's a great option. Okay, our spices have cooked for a couple of minutes here. You can kind of see in the bottom of the pan, there's getting some good brown color. So if you, we were doing French cooking, that would be called fond. Um, and we're going to add in our tomatoes, including their juice. And that's going to kind of, the liquid there is going to encourage those yummy brown spice bits that are on the bottom of the pan to kind of come up into the sauce. So take a second with just the tomatoes in there before you add in the jalapenos and garlic and just give that a really good stir and kind of look at the bottom of the pan and make sure all those yummy brown bits have come up off the bottom. Okay, I feel like the bottom of the pan looks clean and now I am going to stir in my jalapenos and garlic as well as about a half teaspoon more salt. Okay, I'm stirring that together here. And you just wanna cook this for a minute or two, just until you feel like the jalapenos have heated up and are no longer completely raw. We'll just let that come back up to a simmer. Now get your yogurt mixture ready. And um, I can see this bubbling. I think the jalapenos are hot and are starting to cook a little bit. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and add our yogurt using all of our careful steps to prevent any yogurt curdling. So um, the other step that I haven't mentioned yet is that you don't wanna add your yogurt to a boiling pot. You wanna either take the pot off the heat if you have an electric burner or if you have a gas burner like I do, you can just go ahead and turn off the burner. So I have just turned the burner off. Give this a stir and just let it stop simmering for a second here. And now I'm going to take my little jug that has the yogurt with the cornstarch, and I'm gonna put a couple spoonfuls of this hot mixture into the yogurt and stir it in. And that will warm up our yogurt even more. It's already at room temperature, we're gonna bring it up to a warm temperature. So this just gradually raises the temperature of the yogurt rather than shocking it by dumping it into the very hot pan all at once. I'm just gonna go ahead, I put in, I don't know, maybe a half a cup or three quarters of a cup of that vegetable mixture. Just stirring that together so that the yogurt is now warm. All right. Once you get your yogurt stirred up and tempered, now we want to add this yogurt mixture that's warm back into our pan. And our pan is still off the heat at this point. Don't turn it back on quite yet. And I'm gonna add it in gradually, just one spoonful at a time and stir, so on and so forth.
as you add this yogurt in, your sauce um, should start looking really vibrant. Something about the, the spices that are in there, and then when you add in the white yogurt, it, um, it just makes a really beautiful, bold color for your curry sauce. And I'm just stirring this in, and I can see it looks nice and creamy. I'm not having any kind of issues with the yogurt looking like it's starting to break apart or curdle at all. Okay, now I'm just going to scoop that last scoop of yogurt in here. I'll give this one more good stir, get it all evenly mixed in. Once you have that all mixed together, you can turn your heat back on. I will go ahead and turn that back on to medium heat. It could be medium to medium high at this point, and you just want to bring it back up to a low gentle simmer. So once you see it bubbling, that's all you really need to do. Okay, I have my fish ready here. Our next step is to add in our seasoned fish. So as soon as I see this um, simmering or gently bubbling, I'm going to add the pieces of fish back in there. We'll just give it a minute or two. Um, the only other, we basically have this curry, all the work is done for this curry at this point. Um, the only other thing we need to do is a little bit of cilantro at the end for a garnish. And we are also going to have cilantro in our little salad that we're going to mix up here as this curry cooks. So I just cut up all of the cilantro for both things at once and then reserve some of it as a garnish for our curry. Okay, I see some bubbles happening. Can you see that there on the, yeah, I think you can, on the camera. So once you see bubbles, Go ahead and add in your seasoned fish. And of course, fish is a delicate protein here, so you don't want to um, stir this super violently. Um, just kind of gently stir it so that the fish is nestled down inside the sauce. And once again, we are going to keep an eye on this just for the next minute or two. Um, when you add in the fish, it lowers the temperature a little bit. Um, so we just want to keep an eye and watch for it to come back up to a simmer and start bubbling. And I think it's almost there. It doesn't take very long at all. I do see some bubbles here around the edges. I have this at medium heat right now as it is coming up to a simmer. Um, I'm going to reduce the heat a little bit more because at this point we're going to cover it. So once you see bubbles, which I do see some bubbles happening, I'm going to reduce the heat down no more than medium, maybe even a little bit below medium, and go ahead and put the cover on. Um, for the thickness of fish fillets that I'm using tonight, I feel like eight minutes is a good amount of time for this to simmer. And I do like to stir it once halfway through. So I'm going to set my timer for four minutes. There we go. That's all set. And at the four minute mark, I will um, just gently stir it. I feel like the fish that's on the bottom of the pot gets cooked a little faster. So you want to stir it and make sure all of your fish is evenly cooked. Okay. As that cooks, we can make our delicious, refreshing, and simple uh, carrot daikon salad over here. So let's start out making a dressing. Um, I'm just using a very small skillet. This is just an eight inch skillet. You can use a small skillet, a small saucepan, anything small. We're just going to pop some whole seeds in a, um, in a little bit of oil. And that's gonna go together with lemon juice. 
gosh, I just got mustard seeds everywhere. Look at this. This is nonsense. <laughs> that, that oil, that spiced oil is going to go together with lemon juice to create a little bit of a kind of a vinaigrette for our grated salad. So um, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of oil to this pan. I don't really measure when I'm just doing about a tablespoon. That looks about right to me. And you can just go ahead and add your seeds in here even when it's cold. And then we'll just turn it on and listen for the sound of the seeds starting to sizzle and pop a little bit. Once they start sizzling, we know that it is done and we can remove it from the heat. So it doesn't take too long, maybe just a minute or two. I'm gonna go ahead and set this oil mixture with my mustard seeds and cumin seeds over on the burner. And there's not really much to watch at this point, but I'm gonna turn it on. I turn that on kind of on medium high and just keep your ear out. Listen for any snap, crackle, pop noises. Meanwhile, we can get the other parts of our salad ready. Um, so I'm going to get some onion into this bowl. So just get your salad bowl ready. Um, no need to cut up the onion and put it in a small bowl. You can just put everything into the salad bowl that you're going to use. Um, you want around a quarter cup of onion. I happen to have a really, really tiny onion here, so I'm going to use a half of it. Um, normally, with a normal size larger onion, I would use a quarter of the onion, and that would give me about the right amount. And this one, I am going to be a little more careful and cut my onion pieces up even smaller than we did for the curry. So you want these to be small little cubes so that it's just little bursts of onion throughout the salad rather than a big hot bite of onion. Okie dokie. Here is about a quarter cup of finely chopped onion. Now, don't forget to keep an ear out for those seeds that you're cooking in oil right now. I can hear them just starting to sizzle. Um, so they're getting close, very close. You don't want them to, the uh, mustard seeds in particular, you don't want them to pop out of the pan, which they will start doing when they get really hot. So definitely listen for those. Meanwhile, I'm going to juice about a half a lemon in here into the same bowl. You're looking for approximately a tablespoon of juice, so it depends on the size of your lemon. All right. We're turning on the stove camera here one more time so that you can take a look at these seeds, which are just about done now. Um, the cumin seeds have deepened in color to find it more of a golden brown. They'll even start to look a little reddish and the mustard seeds are popping and I can even see a couple of them jumping out of the pan. So I'm definitely taking those off the burner now. Give you one more shot of those before I move that camera away. We're taking them off the burner and just setting those aside for a second. And our timer went off for our fish just a moment ago. So I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna very gently just kind of almost like I'm folding to get the bottom fish up to the top and the top fish down to the bottom. You don't want to break your nice fish pieces apart into little tiny shreds. So be gentle as you're stirring this. I'm gonna set a timer again. And I would say since I was blathering on, I probably didn't stir that until five minutes. So I'm going to set my second timer only for three minutes. Okay. So in this bowl for our salad, we have our quarter cup of minced onion and about a tablespoon of lemon juice. I'm going to put a little bit of salt in here. 
to your own tastes, maybe start with a quarter teaspoon and add a little more if you feel like it needs it, but wait until everything is in there and give it a taste before you add more salt. Um, okay, I am going to um, mince up our cilantro at this point. And the reason I'm doing this a little bit out of order is because I want to have my grating of the carrot and daikon be the last thing I do because I'm going to use the food processor and it's going to make a loud noise. So we're jumping to our cilantro and again we are mincing up cilantro for this salad as well as a garnish for our curry. So you want maybe about a half a cup of loosely packed cilantro for the salad and maybe a quarter cup for the garnish for the curry. This is just washed cilantro, but I have not removed the stems. I always just eat cilantro stems. I think they taste just as good as the leaves as long as you get them nicely minced. So I basically wad the cilantro up into a little ball and then just carefully slice through it to end up with nice finely minced cilantro. Um, if your family does not care for cilantro or someone in your family does not care for cilantro, um, tell them I'm sorry, because that's really a bummer. I know it's just some people think it tastes really bad and um, it's just different people taste this herb different ways. So um, I would recommend just leaving it out as the garnish for the curry. It doesn't really need to be there. If you really wanted to garnish your curry with something at the end, you could, I think a pretty garnish might be, if you got one of those little baby, um, those little baby sweet peppers that they have these days that are red, orange, and yellow, you could cut that into thin rings and just kind of sprinkle those over the top. It would be really pretty and colorful. I wouldn't really choose a different herb to garnish on top of the curry though. There's not one that I can think of that I think would taste very good. Um, however, in the salad with the carrot and daikon, I do think it would taste good to add fresh spearmint if you didn't like cilantro. So that is definitely an option. All right, I'm going to take about two thirds of the cilantro that I've cut up and add it into this salad bowl. And then our remaining one third will be for the garnish for our curry, which is done now. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm gonna give it one more gentle stir. At this point, what you should see is the pieces of fish should be opaque and white. And if you give them a little gentle nudge, they should start flaking apart. Um, and that is a good sign that your fish is all the way cooked through. Again, don't stir it too um, vigorously or you will end up with just a bunch of little fish flakes instead of nice pieces of fish. So that looks good. And the only thing you wanna do now is taste this curry sauce and see if it possibly needs a little bit more salt. This is the moment when you're also going to discover how hot your, your jalapenos were. So we'll see how hot these jalapenos were when I added all three with the seeds. Mmm, delicious. So these jalapenos are not very hot today. So this is just kind of a mild flavorful curry, which is nice because the last two times I've made this, it has been burn your face off hot. So this will be a lovely uh, change <laughs> for all of us. And I do think it has enough salt, but if you want to add a little more salt to yours, please feel free at this point to do that. I have taken it off the heat and I'm just gonna put the lid back on to keep warm while we finish up our salad. All right. So if you have, uh, if you don't have a food processor, you're going to want to just grate these two vegetables um, by hand on a hand grater. But if you do have a food processor, it goes a lot faster. So I have a chunk of daikon radish here, like a four or five inch piece of daikon radish. And I am going to go ahead and peel the outer skin off of here. 
So you just want the nice bright white underneath part of the daikon. Because I am using a food processor and I need to fit it down the feed tube of my food processor, I am gonna go ahead and cut this into quarters lengthwise. But you definitely would not need to do that, of course, if you're grading by hand. And then I do have a lovely carrot. Um, this is an organic carrot, so I'm actually not even gonna peel it. I think it's perfectly fine to just eat a carrot with the peel on when it's organic and when you're grating it. So I did wash it, but I'm not gonna peel it. Okay, I'm gonna grab my food processor and make a little bit of a loud noise here. And I just have this food processor set up with, um, this particular brand has a, you can flip this disc over for fine versus coarse. And for this salad, I like the coarse grating better. So if you're using a box grate, use the coarse setting on your box grater. And I'm just gonna turn this on now. And so it'll be a little loud, but it'll be very fast as I'm grating this. Right. What you're looking for here um, is about two parts daikon to one part carrot. However, if you got a different size piece of daikon um, or a different size piece of carrot, it's not a big deal. As long as you have some daikon and some carrot, this is going to be delicious. So just go ahead and scoop your grated vegetables out into that same salad bowl. And then don't forget to add in your oil with the spicy seeds in there. And you can just go ahead and toss the salad. I have kept this salad purposely um, a fairly small batch. And that is because um, due to the daikon in the salad, it doesn't actually keep very well. Um, it does, it's not that it goes bad. It's still edible, but when you open it up after it being stored in the fridge overnight, um, the daikon just has a kind of a stinky aroma. So it's not as pleasant to eat when it's been stored. So when it's fresh, it smells nice and fresh, really has hardly any smell at all, except just the smell of fresh vegetables. But uh, yeah, it's after, after a night in the fridge, the daikon just starts making a smell. <laughs> so I suggest just eating this the first day for most yumminess. Okay, after you have this all stirred together, um, you can go ahead and give it a little taste and you might want to adjust the salt and or the lemon to your own taste. So I'll go ahead and give it a little taste. Mmm, it's very delicious, very fresh. If you are familiar with Indian food, um, you may know about raita, which is like a vegetable yogurt sauce or it's almost kind of like a side salad, but it is yogurt based. Um, and raita is often included in a meal in order to kind of cool off your palate when you're eating a bunch of spicy things. Um, so this salad actually kind of plays the same role, similar to the yogurt raita. Um, the grated daikon in particular is really cooling. So if you have made a really spicy curry, which tonight our curry is not that spicy, but if you end up with a very spicy curry, you can take bites of this delicious salad in between the bites of curry and it will cool off your mouth. All right, I think we have everything ready to go here. So I'm going to go ahead and plate up our final meal. 
and show you what that looks like. So remember at the start, we cooked some white rice over here. So I'm just gonna grab that out of my cooker. Just get a nice little scoop of rice. Like so. I have to say, I just happen to have some bright blue plates here in the kitchen. And if you happen to have blue or maybe like a pretty green plate, this bright yellow curry looks especially beautiful on the blue plate. So just keep that in mind if by any chance you have blue plates. I'll show you how pretty this looks here in just a moment. So I'm going to scoop up a few big spoonfuls of the fish curry. I kind of like to put it halfway over the rice and then kind of cascading down the side. I'm gonna get a little napkin. I've made a little bit of a mess on the edge of the plate. Got a little splatter of curry. There we go. Okay, that's better. And um, I actually prefer to, if you have the option, I like this grated salad in a little dish um, that you can include on the side of the plate, just because I think it's nicer to have the salad separate instead of having the curry sauce running into it. So I just got a little cute little ramekin here to put our salad. And finishing touch, we have this remaining minced cilantro that we're using for garnish. So we can just top our rice and curry with some of that cilantro. Okay, Erin, can you get me that camera up one more time? And I'll show you what the final plate looks like. This is our Bengali fish curry with daikon carrot salad. I'm going to move it over here to the other camera. All right. Hopefully that looks delicious. I hope you enjoyed cooking along with me today. I know I had fun and I am really looking forward to eating this delicious curry. Um, don't forget. We are Willamette Valley Kitchen Company. I'm Chef Amy here at the Cooking School. Uh, you can check us out online at salemcooks.com. And that is where you go to sign up for future classes. If you sign up for a class, it's only $10 and you do get the full recipe for your meal as well as a grocery list and a prep list. Um, if you would like to find us on Facebook, we are Willamette Valley Kitchen Co. And on Instagram, we are at Salem Cooks. If you cook this meal, I would love to see a picture of what you have created. So please do um, post a picture and tag us. All right. I hope you have a great evening. Thank you for cooking along with us. Good night.